We're out in the shop at the auction center today, uh, uh, kind of a rainy day outside, so we uh, came inside to kind of see what was going on. Uh, the guys have several tractors pulled in here that they're getting freshened up. Uh, some of them have been setting for a long time, uh, so they need fuel tanks cleaned out, things like that. Uh, behind me, uh, this comes from the Jim Ertle collection out in Canandaigua, New York. A lot of you may recognize that name. We did a big auction out there several years ago, and he kept a few tractors. Uh, this is one of them that he kept because it was one of his favorites. This is a, it should be about a 1911 uh, 12 horse international type A. And so this is one of the very, very early international tractors. This came after the friction drives and the, and the uh, tractors that International Harvester uh, marketed with uh, their engine and a Morton chassis. Uh, this was just a few years later and a little more refined. Uh, they got rid of the friction drive going forward and put gear drive going forward. And, and this tractor is actually a two speed. Uh, so it has two speeds going forward, gear drive, and one speed going in reverse on friction. Um, this uses an International Harvester famous engine uh, on a uh, what what in today's standards would be a, a crude uh, a running gear, but uh, hey, for 1911, this was a major technological uh, breakthrough. Uh, this is actually the smallest size that they built. Uh, they built three sizes: a 12, a 15, and a 20. Um, and and they built the fewest of of, of the smaller one of the 12 horse. Uh, with that. Uh, this is probably the only 12 horse known. Uh, this is the last one in existence and uh, it makes it a really, really rare tractor. Um, this, was, this tractor was originally uh, shipped to Michigan um, and uh, was acquired by Mr. Ertl uh, way back when, uh, very early in the hobby. We'll swing around over here to the other side and I'll show you how this, uh, how this transmission works. One thing that was kind of unique about this is, is it was a two-speed tractor, so you had two speeds going forward. Uh, from the operator's platform, you have a clutch to make it, make it go forward and make it stop. If you wanted to switch gears from first to second, you had to stop the tractor, get off the tractor, come over here and choose first or second, which would slide the gears in and out of the bowl gear. Uh, which gave you a different speed. So uh, maybe not the most uh, ergonomic design for 1911, but it was two speeds when at a time when most tractors had one. Uh, so, so kind of a neat uh, and very unique uh, setup on that. From, a, from an operational standpoint, it was actually a pretty easy tractor to run. You've got a, you've got a reverse lever, a clutch lever, and a brake. Uh, whenever you pull the reverse lever back, it actually lifted the, the uh, friction wheel uh, up into the gear, uh, which caused the tractor to turn backwards then. Um, so a really super, super simple design. Um, of course, friction drives aren't, uh, aren't the most efficient way to pull anything, but, but at least it would back you out of some place if you needed to. Uh, and of course, this is your clutch. Uh, just uh, just an in and out on it, and uh, and this is your uh, this is your brake, which would actually uh, uh, it was a band type brake, which would stop the uh, stop the gear the bull gear from spinning. Uh, I know it looks super super simple today, but this was a major technological breakthrough in 1911.